Hey guys, this is how I doubled traffic to a tiny website virtually overnight using a free traffic source that gets over 9 million visitors every month. Plus, I'm also going to share a highly controversial method with you. And on top of that, I'll even give you a free bonus traffic course that will show you how I got over 30,000 website visitors every day for free. I used this method to drive traffic to one of my students' blogs and I've been a pro blogger since, well, 2004. So I've been making a full-time passive income online from blogging and over the years I've helped hundreds of people to do the same. So if you want me to create tutorials on blogging on my YouTube channel, tell me in the comments and I'll go ahead and do that for you. Okay, so. Today, I'm going to show you the results of an experiment that I created for one of my students. And he has kindly provided us with some screenshots of Google Analytics. Now, I'm going to show you the traffic source that we used. Then I'm going to show you how to use it. I'm going to give you two strategies. One of those is very controversial. So fair warning, this is not for everybody. But the first method that I show you is absolutely absolutely the best one to go with. And then you have a second one if all else fails. Maybe. I'll talk more about that later on. Okay, so let's go take a look at those analytics. And what I want to do here is show you before and after. So it's all well and good showing you how to do this and the results that you get immediately afterwards. But what about the lasting long term impact? Well, as you can see, that before we ran this method, the traffic was fairly consistent. And then we have this big spike when we pull the trigger and we implemented the method and then the traffic falls off. But look at this. Interestingly, when it starts to even out, when we when we look at where we started, we've effectively doubled the traffic from a single method. So we've gone from, I think it was around a thousand visitors a day to now 2000 over 2000, in fact. So that's the long term lasting impact of this. But as you can see, when we pull the trigger and deploy the method immediately on that day, we get around 12,000, slightly more than 12,000 visitors on the first day. On the second day, we don't quite hit that, but we still get an awful lot of traffic and then the third and the fourth and it and it tails off. But we we're still getting a lot of traffic. And let me explain what's happening here, because during this period, we are getting other websites linking to us, other big resources. You know, we have Reddit, we have Facebook. What's happening is when we get that initial spike, things tend to go a little bit haywire. So what might happen for you is you will get this big spike and then you'll get a fall off and hopefully you'll get some long lasting traffic. What we want to do is foster a level of, of community or at least build an audience from this big spike in traffic. So what's really happening here, other websites start promoting the content as well. They pick up on it and as it falls off, we can see the traffic starts to level out down here, even though it's doubled from what it initially was, we are continuing to promote to to our own audience via an email list. Now, not all of this traffic comes from an email list, but let's say just say 30 percent does. That's really worth doing. Anyway, people have now booked marked the website and we're getting repeat visits and traffic from a bunch of smaller websites. So the traffic source that we used is called Hacker News, but there is a lot more to it than just visiting that website and then promoting links that will not work. But the strategy that I give you today will increase your chance of success. So let's validate the website. Let's go to similar web and let's have a look at Hacker News. So the actual domain name is news dot y combinator. There we go. Y combinator dot com. So we'll have a look at the traffic levels. So the global rank 7000. It's the, the three thousandth most popular in the United States. And the traffic 
has been pretty consistent over the last six months. It's even managed to get over 10 million visits a month. And there you can see it's averaging at over 9 million every month. 39% of that traffic comes from the United States, 5% from UK, then Canada, Germany and China. Now we know that it's a valuable traffic source. We need the right strategy and it all starts with having great content. So I'm going to explain what you need to do to make great content. Then I'm going to show you how to do it. So great content has to be relevant to the audience. If it's not of relevancy, then they're just going to ignore it. They're not going to, uh, it's not going to appeal to them, right? It's like selling or, or pushing apples to someone who really likes oranges. It's just not going to happen. The content also has to be unique. I cannot stress the importance of this enough. You cannot take someone else's content and spin it through one of those article spinners. That's not going to work. You have to write it yourself or get someone who is a professional to do it for you. So the content absolutely has to be unique. The hook and the angle that you use has to be different as well. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a bit more detail later on. But it also has to be interesting. So what we're looking for is something, something new that tells a, a new story or tell something in a new way that is of high relevancy to the audience. It's unique and it is interesting. I'll talk about how to make it interesting in a second. And when you have all these things together, it should be share worthy because you're not just going for this initial spike in traffic. What you want to do is, is create something that is going to spread across the internet. And you know, the internet is a big place. There's lots of traffic out there. You don't have to go viral. You don't have to get millions of views or anything like that. It just has to spread a little bit across the internet. And when you think about how big the internet is, that's really not that unrealistic to, to expect to reach a wide number of people fairly quickly. So it has to be share worthy. And for best results, it, it has to be controversial as well. I'm going to show you how to find controversial information that you can use and you can weave into your content. And if you've been around Profit Code Pilot for a while and, and you know who I am, you know that I have done very well from controversy. We'll talk more about how to engineer controversy later on, because before we get into the real meat of this, you have to be aware that nothing is guaranteed. So you could implement this and get nothing. And that is because the number of variables involved in this is just crazy high. So I can give you the best strategy in the world and you can repeat it 10 times and you might only get a positive hit from that three times. There is no real telling on what kind of results you can get. And listen, hopefully, hopefully you're going to get better results than I have. And that's why I'm sharing this with you, because I want you to do really well on the Internet. I know it's possible and I know anyone can do it. OK, so the number of variables is crazy high. You also have to know the audience's values. So not just the interests and the, and the demographic information. You have to know the psychographics. You have to know what they care about. I'll show you how to find that information out in a second. Once you know what their values are, you have to know how to tap into their confirmation bias. What's confirmation bias? Well, it's the things that they already believe. It's how they see the world. That's why you need to know their values, because you have to know how they see the world and then be able to tap into that belief. When you tap into that belief, you will now know how to confirm their suspicions. Really pay attention to this. This is really important stuff, not just for this traffic method, but for practically any method involving marketing. This is a very valuable lesson. So, you know, the audience sees the world a certain way. 
They have specific values and beliefs about that. That's the confirmation bias. You have to tap into that so you agree with it. So you give them something that supports the confirmation bias. And then you tap into and confirm their suspicions. So they're wary of something. They're, they're concerned about something. They suspect that the world is a certain way or an issue or a topic is a certain way. And they're looking for evidence to support it. So you give them that evidence. I'll show you how to get it in a couple of minutes. And also importantly, when you're promoting your content, do not use link shorteners. Do not use bit.ly or equivalent. You want to promote the content that is on your website using the actual domain name, the actual URL of your website. This will not work with bit.ly or any link shortener because people will immediately distrust it because they can't see where they're clicking. So all your efforts will fail. So link to your own website. So how do you get data to use in your content? How do you get content ideas that you know is going to have some decent impact? Well, we can use Freedom of Information Act requests. So if we go to whatdotheyknow.com, this is a British website. There is probably an equivalent for uh, other countries around the world. I don't know what they are. I only know the British one. So whatdotheyknow.com. It will allow you to send Freedom of Information Act requests to government bodies and the public sector to get information that has not been released into the public yet. Now, this is a goldmine of information because every single day, lots of people are sending these Freedom of Information Act requests and they're made public. So that means we can use that data immediately. Now, if you want to uncover your own data and your own scoops and stuff, that's probably the best way to go about it. But if you want to take the lazy man option, which, which I always tend to prefer, then we can we can find Freedom of Information Act requests that other people have made in the last in the last 24 hours, in the last week, last month, what have you. So here we have this search bar. So let's think about the angle that you're going for. Let's think about the uh, confirmation bias that people might have. So let's say we want to uncover something controversial, maybe about the police. So if we go police, what we're going to get is a few options here. So we've got requests, users, authorities, everything. You want to narrow it down to requests so we can see what questions have been asked of the various police departments around the UK. So we want to restrict it to successful requests. So we're only dealing with uh, answers, requests that have been answered. So the, so there is data here. Now you can add a filter if you want to. So you can limit, you know, how how long ago. If you, if you want really fresh information, then you can you can do that. But I'm going to show you how to how to filter in a different way in a second. So if we click filter, it's going to bring back a lot of results here about the police. But if we click newest results first, it's going to change it again. And now we have the latest Freedom of Information Act requests that have been successful about the police in the UK. Now, this can be used to uncover very controversial information. So, for example, I'm not going to delve into any one of these. I, I don't think be, I'll, I'll leave it for you to explore in your own time. But you can you can get some really interesting data to use. So that's just with police. If you go back up to the search field, you can put in practically anything and get data about that. So if we want to go marketing, let's see what we've we've got back uh, back. So again, we go requests successful filter and then newest results first. 
there we can see that, I mean, this data was published yesterday, so it's pretty fresh. And then these were published a couple of days ago. So use that, use it wisely, uh, and even send your own Freedom of Information Act requests if you're in the UK. I think it only applies to UK residents, but anyone around the world can use this website and access the data and then create stories based on that information. So let me give you an example of a piece of controversial content. So this was published a few years ago, but it still does the rounds because it's so powerful. So this is an article. It says we built voice modulation to mask gender in technical interviews. Here's what happened. So it's tapping into a confirmation bias that some people have that that women are treated differently in technical interviews. So it wants to explore that and uncover some new data. Now, of course, you don't have to uh, go to this length because you already have a bunch of data that I've, I've just shown you how to access. But if you have a look at how this is structured, it, it just lays everything out in almost like a, here are the facts. You know, there's no real spin or hype about this. It's just presenting things as they are and then talking uh, talking about the impact of that so if, if you go through you'll see that they've done a really good job on presenting presenting the data and interestingly what this tends to do is it goes against the grain a little bit so so while it does support various uh, confirmation biases it also presents brand new information and frames it in a way that in a way that we have never seen before. So if you can create content that does something similar and it, you know, the topic can be pretty much anything as long as it's interesting and it's unique and it's of relevance, you're going to be OK because you have access to a whole world of information just on that website and then do take the time to explore your own country's equivalent. So let's go to Hacker News and let's explore what is currently working pretty well on the website. Now you can see that we've got a few options here to submit content. It's really simple. You you click submit. Let me show you that. I'll open that in a new tab. So there you have the title. You have the URL. Remember, don't use bit.ly link or any shortener and then you have some supporting text. Now, we do have guidelines to follow, but it's really important that you take the time to read those. So it's going to tell you what's on topic. So anything that good hackers would find interesting and it includes more than hacking in startups. So don't allow that to restrict what you contribute here. It just has to be really interesting stuff. So we have these sections here. So we have the front page. Then we have new. So if we click new, it's going to take us to the newest posts. And this section here still gets an awful lot of traffic. In fact, the entire website gets a lot of traffic. So you can you can go to past and you'll see that we've got things from a day or so, two days ago, maybe still getting a lot of traction. So how it works? Well, it's it's kind of similar to Reddit. So when someone publishes or makes a contribution, it lands in this newest section here. Now people can upvote the content. So we can see if we go down a little bit, we've got this one has got uh, two points, two points there. So not, not a lot of activity, but listen, you only need a handful of points to really hit the front page. And when you hit the front page, that's when things start to explode because you'll notice that some of these have got that's got a hundred over a hundred points and there will probably be some with like a thousand. Yeah, there we are. So a thousand uh, upvotes or points there. So the more points you get, the, the the higher you climb. But because of the way this system works, people figured out it was pretty pretty easy to game the system. So they figured out they could hack Hacker News. Now I'm going to talk about that in a second, 
but you have to use it at your own risk. So I'm going to share it with you, but I'm not going to encourage you to do it because listen, this information is out there, right? It's been out there for a while, so I may as well fill you in on it and not hold anything back because, you know, as a fully grown adult entrepreneur, you and only you will decide what is right for your business. I feel like I need to give you all the facts so you can decide for yourself so you are fully informed. Okay, so this is how people have previously hacked Hacker News. I'll tell you how to do it. I'm not saying you should do it, but be aware that your account will absolutely get banned if you get caught doing this. Okay. So what they do, what, what hackers tend to do is they get friends to make accounts weeks in advance. So, it, so you have to really plan this out. So you, you got to convince a whole bunch of people, maybe 20 or 30 people to get involved with you on this and create accounts that seeding those accounts with activity so everyone needs to start upvoting things contributing things that are not associated with you and most importantly everyone has to come from a different ip so hacker news has got software to to uh, detect this kind of activity so you know you got to kind of do it for real everyone has to have their own ip then they post content you put if you were doing this, which I don't encourage you to do, but if you were to do it, then you would post your content on Hacker News and then send your friends to the newest section that we spoke about previously. So I showed you the two big sections on Hacker News with the front page and then we had the new section. So you want to send your friends to the newest immediately after the content is published. Do not link to your post. So you're going to have a unique URL to Hacker News, to your post on Hacker News. Don't use that. You, you want them to go to the newest section and then upvote on there. You're only going to need maybe five or six upvotes to hit the front page. Maybe a bit more now, but you're going to get on the front page pretty quickly. And then you want more friends to now go to the news section. So that's the front page and then upvote you on there. So that's how you can game the system, but Hacker News are aware of this and they have software that runs to try and prevent it. They try and detect these kind of networks and then ban people. So, you know, use at your own risk. OK, real quick, let me tell you about the next tutorial that I've got planned and that's coming out on Friday. So what I'd like to do is share three of my best performing traffic sources. And if you want those, tell me in the comments and I'll go ahead and create that for you on Friday. And if you want that free course that I mentioned at the beginning, it's going to show you how I got 30,000 website visitors every day for free. Get it when you go to profitgopilot.com slash traffic. I'll put a link to, to that in the description. And if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up below. Subscribe to the channel to hit that little notification bell so you never miss an update from me. And I will hopefully see you again in a couple of days time. Take care.